Yeah, chat. Kim, there's only one mic, so there's only <laughs> one mic, so I think you should keep it up there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great. Thanks, somebody. Yeah, hi. Hi. I was just wondering how this all came about. Um, oh, both of you found together and to create such a beautiful. Oh, that's nice. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what happened was um, I was at a conference in India, mm-hmm. and um, it, was, it, was, it wasn't really about anything the whole day. It was one of those really boring days. And at the end of the, de- the day, a woman just got up and she started, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> See how nice she is. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. At the end of the day, this woman got up and she said, I want to tell you a story about this amazing woman. And she told some story, just, you know, quite short, but she told the story of what you've just watched. And I thought, that story is, is so extraordinary because... I don't know, if, for example, if, have you, if you've heard of Nelson Mandela who smuggled his book out. He was in prison in Robben Island and he wrote it on tiny little bits of toilet paper. And every time a prisoner left, um, they would take a little bit of the book and the book was gradually pieced together. And all of us that were campaigning for Mandela's release, um, we were all shocked when this book came out. And what I thought was so extraordinary about somebody like Salma is she's done it all herself. There was nobody. It was her mum and Selma, actually, who got the, the poems out. And I thought of, that she was a voice, a sort of lone voice for all the millions of other girls who were going, going through the same thing as her. But nobody campaigns for them, and in fact, nobody knows about them. And as you saw in the film, one by one, the girls just suddenly drop from life and disappear and are never really seen again. So I just thought it seemed the most extraordinary story but also a very hopeful story that if there's people like Selma, that things will change, you know. So, because I think films about victims are quite dispiriting to watch, but films about survivors make our lives worth living, really, you know. So that's why, how the film came about. And I wrote to Selma, I emailed her. She's constantly on Facebook, you can see on the film. And um, she immediately wrote back and said, uh, when do you want to come? So she's just very open and she's just like, she's in the film. And, and it was a big, it felt like a big risk, but I went and it was a bit like first day at school when you meet someone and you think, I really want to be their friend. That's what it felt like. <laughs> the man there is great. Yes, um, to sum up, how, how prevalent is this in India? Is it... 20%, is it 50% of the population? Is it of the girls? Um, because a lot, cause a lot of, there's a lot of well-educated Indian girls. And it's only in certain villages. Her, uh, your questions saying that basically is this how pre- prevalent is this and does this happen to all the girls in India? Uh, you need to understand this is a special community in a countryside and in that community only 6% of or even in the village community only 6% of the girls go to graduate school. Um, b- very often they stop uh, education around uh, when they reach puberty. And uh, your question on how prevalent is this in her community, it's very prevalent. Uh, if you want to take the 1.2 billion population of India, I don't think we have an answer now, G. But the point is, statistics-wise, uh, in the 
uh, countryside, uh, I'm trying to use the American phrase, in the village community, only 6% of the girls go to graduate school. Okay. Okay, if you watch the movie, she says she wants you to notice one thing. Throughout the life, the girl is controlled by a male in her family. Um, the parents control her, particularly the father in the younger age. Uh, then she gets married, then everything for her is decided by the husband or the husband's family. And then there's no escape because the children also start dominating the woman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's her life she has experienced. That's what has happened. And this is, this situation may be common in various degrees for almost all women. That's her perception. Uh, it, it may be varying degrees, but she says this dominance by the men over women, she feels it's pretty common for women from every, anywhere in the world. I think it's not just India, it's Afghanistan, Pakistan, Yemen, Saudi Arabia. I mean, just, it is millions of girls, it's not just these girls. It's, it's not just India. Okay, uh, the, once her book was published, she had to go to Germany, and when she went to the German consulate to apply for a visa, they asked her to bring a letter, from, a permit letter from her husband saying she was permitted to leave. This is not the Indian, it's the German consulate. She got so angry, she told them, I don't need your visa. And I'm not coming. And then after four days, she had all of <laughs> so she says, I mean, that's the example she's giving, this attitude. I mean, what is the document? Why did she have to get a permit from her husband to apply for a visa? And what she's saying is, if my husband were to travel, would they have told him to go get permission from his wife? <laughs> Yeah, that's why I wanted to hold it close to her, but she's not. Uh, what were you asking, ma'am? No, just that it would be so nice to hear her voice. Oh, we need to talk to her. I get another book pair published at Chen, invite Pandanga, and not a government on the name with Pandraga. Upper in the India government, they name it Aungan and Prang, and then not told a cooperation with them, the Naraka than the function of Poe. And now on the end of Sultana, Poe and the lady on the Poe husband or a permission letter Laman the King, application, Panga Mudia than Sultan. Nine or husband or in a poll, now Pona Namatana, Catholic Poe, and Napo and Kumoko on the. And I, the Saudi Arabia or Matana, the Marusian, or a Kona Calipotri, and I'm in your Germany and I'm in the Marke Korean solitaire. Now, Ko Matrim on the application letter put the two of Wang letter on that. Upper Alcapro, Indian government, embassy, German embassy, like I'll go to solitaire and the Maris. And Ko Masonal Capra, Unga, coating a consulate solia, Unga, coat the Thirma, Mona, which I'm like good tag, the game and another kind of Sonang. Okay, the, she added a few points. I don't know if someone caught it. She, when she went to the German consulate, uh, uh, she said uh, when she t when they asked her, she couldn't believe it that a country like Germany could ask such a question. She thought that happens only in Saudi Arabia. So when she said, "I don't need your visa," left it, and then she went to the Indian consulate and the Indian government authority, who was arranging this cooperative book fair, and said, "This is what happened. I don't need to go there." So apparently the Indian uh, government con contacted the government uh, of Germany or whatever, the, Angla, the, Angla, the, the uh, German embassy and said, what are you guys asking? And then she's being invited by your country. And so they then called her back after four days and gave her the visa. <laughs>
Oh, um, yeah. So I just wanted to say. Um,